let's go through this topic which is called the algebraic expressions okay now what are you expected to know from your curriculum what are you expected to know there are six subtopics under this topic which is called algebraic expression uh tando i tried muting you please mute yourself okay and you are muted all right so now what do you expect to understand that these six subtopics we're gonna talk about we need to understand that the real numbers can be rational or irrational which i believe you did the number systems in grade nine but we'll try to revise or to review what are the number systems what are the numbers under number systems so we're gonna have to understand the real numbers can be rational or irrational that's what we're gonna learn and we need to establish between which two integers uh integers a given sample said lies so what's happening here is you're gonna be provided with um two sets and then we're gonna learn uh we're gonna have to be able to determine two integers that uh lies between those two sets and then number three we need to uh, we need to round real numbers to an appropriate degree of accuracy okay so i think we also know how to round off the numbers and therefore number four we're gonna do the multiplication of a binomial by three uh trinomial so we're gonna multiply binomial by a trinomial we know that binomial it simply means two terms and the trinomial it means it simply means three three terms and therefore number five um sorry about that and then number five uh we're gonna do a factorization to include types taught in grade nine we have learned how to factorize some of the um, um algebraic expressions uh, we're going to do trinomials, grouping in pairs. We did that. Sum and differences of two cubes. We also, I think, we did this one in grade nine. So, and then number six, simplify and adding, subtracting algebraic fractions using factorization with denominators of cubes limited to sum and differences of cubes. Okay. Now, these are the things that we are actually, actually going to cover under this topic. So, without wasting time, let us go through the uh, topic. Now, let's remind ourselves, what is a number system? Now, number system, there are many different types of numbers. We have numbers that are presented in decimals, meaning in commas. There are numbers that are positive. There are numbers that are negatives. So all of the numbers are categorized and are grouped or are labeled under their categories and we're gonna learn that. Meaning if I give you a number, you're supposed to be able to tell whether the number it is real number, a non-real number, is it an integer, is it a fraction, is it a whole number, is it a natural number? Meaning as a mathematician or as a mathematics learner, you're supposed to understand all of those things. So the whole thing of grouping the numbers, it is called the number system. Now, the number system, it is further subdivided into two subs. So under the number systems, we have the real numbers, okay? Now, what are the real numbers? Learn this. The real numbers can either be regarded as rational or irrational. So meaning, if we have the real numbers, you know that the real numbers can be regarded as rational or irrational. Now, let us start Firstly, by talking about the rational numbers. The rational numbers can further be divided into fraction. The rational numbers can further be divided into the integers. Now, when we talk about the rational numbers, we are talking about the numbers that terminate. I'll give you an example now. Now, what are the numbers that terminate? Let us have a look at an example of rational numbers. So when you talk about the rational numbers, Okay, when you talk about the rational numbers, we are talking about the numbers that terminate. Let me show you how. Example, 4 is an example of a rational number. Okay, this is not irrational. It is rational because it is a whole number. You understand what I'm saying? Number 2, a number that we can also regard as rational number is 2,5. I understand this number, it is decimal, right? So, 
since all this number it is decimal you have to understand that this number does terminate so we regard this number as a rational number okay so 2,5 it is also regarded as rational number um another example of rational number it's 22 over 7 when i type 22 over 7 uh we also regard this <clears throat> Let me do this. We also regard this as a rational number, okay? We regard it as a rational number, but under the fraction, you will see how. So when you talk about the uh, irrational numbers, when you take a root, let's talk about irrational numbers. When you talk about the irrational numbers, we are talking about what type of numbers? A root 5, this is an example of irrational number. So when you take root 5 under... um. When you take root 5 on your calculator, you're going to get, let me do it quick, quick on my calculator, root 5. It gives me something like this, 2,2,3,6,0,6,7,9,7,7. So this number, it is regarded to be irrational. Why do we say it is irrational? Because it doesn't terminate. It does not stop. It is crazy. Meaning 2, comma, blah, 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 blah. That simply indicates that this root of 5, which correspond with this number, it is irrational because it really doesn't terminate at all. So you have to know the difference between the rational number and irrational number. Like I said, rational number, it is a number that terminates. Irrational number, it is a number that do not terminate. It is crazy, meaning it is irrational. When someone says you are irrational, they mean you are crazy. Other example of irrational number, it's pi. So pi, we know when you punch it on your calculator, it's 3, 1, 4 something. So it's 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 2, 6, 5, 4. You see, pi, it corresponds with this number over here. And apparently, pi is a very long number. It doesn't end here. It continues and continues and continues. So pi, it is also regarded as irrational number. It is crazy. This number doesn't stop. It doesn't terminate at all. And so why we say it is irrational number, okay? So um, that's how we can tell that we have the rational numbers and the irrational numbers, okay? So those, they fall under what we call the real, real numbers. Is that clear? So any number that you see, it's called the real number whether it is uh, positive, whether it is negative, whether it's zero, any number that you can think of, it is a real number. But real number, we have rational and irrational. Rational, numbers that stops. Irrational, numbers that do not stop, meaning they are crazy. I love to say that. So now let's talk about the non-real numbers. The non-real numbers are numbers that are imaginary. We call them the imaginary numbers. They really do not exist. For an example, what are the examples of non-real numbers? So the non, the non-real numbers are example of numbers that really do not exist. For an example, when you take your root sign on your calculator and under the root sign, you insert a negative number. I really do not care whether it's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative one comma four, negative. As long as you have a negative number under your root sign, it's gonna give you math error on your calculator. So what does that mean? That simply means that the negative root number, it is non-real number. It doesn't exist at all. Okay, this is an example of a non-real number. Another example of non-real number, anything divided by zero. Anything divided by zero, you can go to your calculator right now and type, for example, two divided by zero. You're going to see it's going to give you math error. Why does it give you math error? Because two over zero, it is regarded to be a non-real number. Is that clear? I hope that's clear. So any number, these, I understand these are numbers, but you have to understand that these are imaginary numbers. But any number that can be negative number, positive number, 0, 2 over 7, root 5, which is positive under the root sign, pi, all of these, any number that you can think of, it's a real number, okay? And then the non-real number is these cases that we have over here.
Now let's talk about under the rational number, we have what we call the integers and the fractions. I think we're all familiar with the fractions. We know how do we see a fraction. Just that um, at the lower grades, we have learned the improper fractions. We have learned the proper fractions. But for now, it's not that really important. All you need to know that how to express your fraction, like 22 over 7, x over y. This is an example of a fraction. And then the integers are all numbers. The integers are all numbers. The integers are negative numbers, zero, and positive numbers. We call them the integers. And you have to be careful. The integers are not in decimals. The integers are whole numbers, okay? Such as the numbers that we see over here. These are good examples of the integers, okay? So fractions can lead to decimal numbers, right? Like 22 over 7. I don't know what is 22 over 7. Let me just punch it on my calculator. So when I say 22 over 7, this is what I get. Ah, oh, actually 22 over 7, it is irrational, okay? 22 over 7 is actually irrational. So 22 over 7, it gives me 3, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, blah, 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 blah. So this number over here, it is regarded to be irrational, not rational, okay? It is irrational. So 22 over 7, it is a number that do not terminate. It doesn't terminate at all. So this number, it is a fraction. But you can see that this number can also be presented in a form of decimal. So 22 over 7, which is 3 comma blah, blah, blah. So this 3 comma blah, 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 it has a comma in it. So that means we know that this type of a number, it is called a decimal number. Okay, because it has commas. So we have specific types of decimal numbers such as recurring decimals for an example 0, 0,333 this is a recurring number because it repeats itself consecutively uh, how do we represent the recurring number you can just simply write 0, 0,3 and then you write a dot at the top so this dot it simply means that this number it it is recurring. You can continue by expanding this number in decimal by writing continuous threes consecutively. Okay, that's how we see the recurring decimal. And I believe these things you are familiar with them since you were doing in grade, grade nine, but now you are in grade 10. So I don't think this will be challenging for you. Now we have the whole numbers, even in grade 12, number system, grade 12, grade 11, grade 10, you need to understand these things. So let's talk about the whole numbers. So when you talk about the whole numbers, these are examples of the whole numbers. The whole number starts from zero to positive numbers. Negative values or negative numbers, we do not call them the whole numbers. Rather, it's a part of the integers. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth. Those numbers are called the whole numbers. How do you see the whole numbers? They start with zero, we call them the whole numbers, okay? And then we have the natural numbers. The natural numbers, this is an example of natural numbers, one, two, three, four. Natural numbers are not the whole numbers. Natural numbers start with one. The whole numbers starts with zero. That's the difference between the two, and I hope that was clear. So this is a quick reminder on how a number system actually looks like. And this number system, it basically welcomes you to create 10, okay? I hope that was clear. Now, let us jump to this uh, slide over here. Now, how to write a recurring decimal number as a common fraction? Um, here's the thing, a challenge is you can be given 0, 0,8 recurring, right? Remember I said to you, when you say 0, 0,8 and then you write a dot at the top, what does, this, what does this simply mean? It means that we have the recurring 8 in this number. So that means you can rewrite this number in this way. You can say this is the same as 0, 0,8888888 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, and so forth. Can you see that? So this type of decimal, it is a recurring decimal. Remember, when I go back to the slide, I say to us, we have different types of decimals, but the ones that have the continuous numbers consecutively, we call them the recurring decimal. So when I come back here, we have a recurring decimal. So a recurring decimal is something that looks like this. So we need to know how to rewrite 
this this mal inf into fraction remember you can have a fraction and that fraction you can convert it into decimal you can have a decimal that decimal you can convert it back into a fraction so here we're going to learn on how to convert a decimal with recurring number a recurring decimal to a fraction okay so say for example you are given 0, 0.88888 and they say to you rewrite this number in fraction now let's have a look at this example so we're gonna let x i get it we are given this 0, 0.8 we need to convert this into fraction we're gonna let 0, 0.88888 to be equals to x okay so meaning we're gonna let x to be equals to 0, 0.88888 and then we call we're gonna call this equation number one why do we call it equation number one? Because now we have equal sign. We have just formulated the equation by putting this equal sign. So we're going to let x to be equals to 0, 0.88888. Now we have equation, which is equation number one. The second step that we're going to do is we're going to multiply equation number one with 10. Okay, so why do we multiply equation 1 with 10? Simply because we want to convert this 0, 0,8888 into a fraction. Okay, I'll show you. This number, it is the same, which is 8. If maybe we had 0, 0,8 something something, we're going to multiply it by, by 100. But I'll show you as time goes by. If we had three different numbers, but I'll show you as time goes by. So here we're going to multiply this equation, which is equation 1 by 10 uh, on both sides. So remember, on this side, we have x, right? We have x is equal to 0, 0,88888. So we're going to multiply both sides by 10. So if I multiply x by 10, I'm going to have to get 10x. If I multiply this side also by 10, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get 8,88888 once more. Again, when I multiply it by 10, you can prove it on your calculator that 0, 0,88888 multiplied by 10. Am I going to get this? Is this true? You and I get this. That will be the second step. Remember the first step, we let x to be equals to that. The second step, we multiply both sides of the equation by 10 from here to there, from there to there. And therefore, after multiplying by 10, we formulated new equation whereby 10x is equals to 8,88888. Now we call this equation equation number two. And therefore, we're going to look for the difference between the two equations. So we're going to say equation 2, subtract equation 1. So our equation 2 in this case, it is this equation over here. This, remember, it is our equation number 2. And then this, remember, it is our equation 1. We're going to subtract these two equations. So we're going to say 10x minus x, we're going to get 9x. And we're going to say 8 comma 88888 eight, 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 subtract 0, 0,88888 eight, eight, eight. we're gonna get 8 okay we're gonna get 8 when you do that on your calculator and therefore now what you're gonna do is now we have 9x is equals to 8 but because we are looking for x we're gonna divide both sides by 9 so when I divide here by 9 when I divide there by 9, 9 will cancel 9, and then I'm going to left with x. So that means on this side of the equation, I'm going to have 8 over 9. This will be my value of x. Now, this x, it is the same as this thing. So that means 0, 0,8 recurring is the same as 8 over 9. When you go to your calculator and you say 8 over 9, just do it right now. Just type 8 over 9, and then you will see that you're going to get 0, 0,8888888, and the last number will be 9. And therefore, this is the correct way on how to convert this into a fraction. Rewrite the following decimal number, an equivalent rational fraction. So now we have the rational fraction. The fraction is rational. So now let's have a look at example number two. Remember, if you do not understand, raise up your hand on, or just open up your mic and ask me a question where you do not understand. So example number two, it says to us, rewrite the following decimal number into a fraction once more again. 
you are giving this decimal number once more again. So our decimal number, it is also recurring because we can see we have dots on top of our numbers. So we have something that looks like this, zero, uh, zero comma one five four. We have dot there, we have dot there, we have dot there. So what does those dots mean? It means we have something like this, zero comma one five four, one five four, one five four, one five four, and so forth and so on and so on. Okay, because these dots are simply mean mean uh, they simply means that this number it is uh, recurring. So we're gonna let this again the very same thing that we did on example number one. We're gonna let x to be equals to 0, 154, 154, 154, and therefore after letting our x to be that, now we're gonna call this again equation equation number one. Now here bear in mind now here we're gonna multiply by a different number we are no longer multiplying by 10 but we are multiplied by 1000 aha now someone could ask why here we multiply by 10 but why here we multiply by 1000 this is what i wanted to explain before now here's the thing when you have, when you have a look at this number so after comma we have one number that is the same so that means we're going to have to multiply by 10. So meaning we multiply by one zero, which is one zero. You understand what I'm saying? We multiply by one zero. But when you have a look at these numbers, they are different. And how many numbers are different? Three of them. So that means if we want to convert this into a fraction, we're going to have to multiply this by thousand because we have one. How many zeros? One, two, three. We have one three zeros so one two three so each and every zero over here it present a number over there so if we had something like this one comma one five four uh, three i'm just making an example if we had something like this how, we, we were going to multiply this by how much one two three four one one two three four zeros so we're going to multiply this by ten thousand can you see that so if we have something like this is zero comma eight we're going to multiply this by how much we have only one one so we're going to multiply it by one zero we're going to multiply this by ten but if we have something that looks like this two five recurring recurring so we are going to multiply this by how much? One, two. We have two different numbers that recurs. So that means we're going to multiply this by one. How many? One, two. One, two, zeros. So we're going to multiply by one, two, zeros. It depends on these numbers over here for how many zeros do we need to multiply this with. I hope that was clear now. So now here, the reason why we multiply by 1,000 on both sides of this equation is because of we have three different numbers, so we need three zeros, one, three zeros, meaning we're going to multiply by 1,000. So x multiplied by 1,000 is going to be 1,000x, and 0, 154, 154, 154, multiply by 1,000, we're going to get 154, 154, 154, 154. You can prove that with your calculator as well. And therefore, you're going to take this equation, which is equation number two again. You're going to subtract it from equation number one. So equation number two is this one over here. So you're going to say 1,000 subtract x, which is equation number one x. And you're going to get 999x. And therefore, you're going to take this side. And then you're going to subtract with this side of the equation. You're going to say 154, 154, 154, 154, 154 subtract 154 um here's a mistake okay we were supposed to here's a mistake this equation over here is supposed to be this equation not it doesn't start with 154 it's supposed to be 0 comma 154 154 154 0 comma not 153 comma okay here's supposed to be zero actually from this equation which is equation number one and therefore, when you subtract this equation from this equation, you're going to get 154. And then we are looking for x. That means you're going to have to divide both sides by 9, 9, 9. Or even on that side, we're going to divide by 9, 9, 9. 9, 9, 9, we cancel 9, 9, 9. We're going to left with x. And then our x will be 154 divided by 9, 
nine nine and therefore that's how we actually rewrite the recurring decimal numbers as a common fraction now on this slide uh, we have um, example number three so now example number three it says to us without using a calculator determine between which two integers the following irrational numbers lie okay we need to figure out two integers the following irrational number lies apparently this is the irrational number go to your calculator and type square root of 39 you're gonna get six comma two four four nine nine seven nine nine eight so that means square root of 39 it is irrational right because it is crazy it doesn't terminate it doesn't stop at all so what we want to do is without using a calculator we want to determine right we have spoke about the number systems we want to determine which two integers which two integers the following rational number lies we want to know okay, this number it is between which two integers is between which into two integers so the first thing that we're gonna do we're gonna look at the square numbers that are close to 39 right so we're gonna take we know that 36 it's a perfect square uh six yeah 36 is a perfect square 49 is a perfect square remember we have 39, right? So a number after 39, we want the perfect squares. 40, it is not a perfect square. 41, it is not a perfect square. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, those are not perfect squares. 47, 48, 49, it is a perfect square. So we want a perfect square that is close to 39 on this side of the number line right because it's 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 but we want perfect square along the counting so we just figured that 49 it is a perfect square that lies after 39 right now before 39 we have numbers such as 38 right we have numbers such as 37 36 and so forth so again we are looking for a perfect square 38 it is not a perfect square 37 it is not a perfect square 36 it is a perfect square it is a perfect square you understand what i'm saying so that means these are two numbers that can form a perfect square right and these two numbers we call them the rational numbers. How? Let me show you something. When you take a root of 36, here we have a root of 39, which is what we are, we are focusing on to, right? And in this side, I said we have 49, meaning we're going to take root of 49. So when you take a root of 36, you're going to get 6. You see that root of 36, it is rational. It is not irrational. But remember, root of 39, it is the one that is irrational because you're going to get something that is crazy. You understand what I'm saying? Root of 49 is going to be 7. So that means root of 39, it will be lying between these two rational numbers. These are the rational numbers, actually. These are two rational numbers. So root of 39, it will be lying between these two rational numbers. So when you have a look at this example, sharp. We are provided with root of 39 so we want the 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 two integers that lies between the two so the two integers remember it integers is positive numbers negative numbers or whatever so it happens that six it is an integer and seven it is integer so that means firstly go look at the two square numbers that are close to 39 we looked at them it's 36 and 49 right and therefore, we know that 36 is the same as 6 to the power of 2 and 49 is the same as 7 to the power of 2. Thus, that, that means 6 will be, be 6 and um, root of 39 will be between 6 
and seven. So we use this inequality signs. We're gonna say six is less than 39, uh, root of 39, and then root of 39, it's less than seven. It's between, meaning this simply means that root of 36, it will be between these two integers, which is six and nine. Okay, so that's how we uh, determine the integers that are between this irrational number. This is irrational number. So we were looking for the integers next to them. We're looking for integers that are between that. We're gonna use the root signs, okay? I hope that was clear. So, now we have the questions, okay? Now we have the questions. Um, let me do this. <clears throat> 